was me in the intro. You're I'm there. part of this now. I was there, Mario. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like an official part of the team now that I'm in the video. You look great on the video. Well, I appreciate that, man. It was back when I had hair, uh, long hair too. I, I was going to say that's, that's how you look when I met you. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. So like little history for the, the world. We, you met me, we were discussing four years ago uh, yep. and it was in, in Mexico city and we were, you were a translator at that gig, right? Yep. I was translating for you for English to Spanish for an L1, I think. It was yeah. an L1. Yep. And we've stayed in touch ever since. Uh, yeah. So it's it's been a bit. Uh, but now you're living in the US. You're in Arizona? Yep. Tucson. And it's 120 degrees there? Something like that. I'm still having a couple of issues going from Celsius to Fahrenheit. But yeah, something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah, I was just hearing that Arizona was having like the worst ever uh, uh, heat wave. And it's, that is what you're experiencing. It's intense, not gonna lie. Like everybody keeps telling me when I move here at the beginning of the year, like, oh, just wait till the summer. That's when you get the real heat. I'm starting to feel it. I know what people are talking about now. Yeah, dude. I have no idea how you could do it. That is not. Uh, what is this name my name just switched to? Did you see that? Pat, Pat the Crow, Crow. yes. Cody, you back at behind the scenes messing with stuff right now? Hey, he's there. Uh, <laughs> well, mine hey. also to cross the fix too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to jump into the video, uh, but is there anything I need to know before we jump in? Like, hey, I taught this whole class, class with no pants or like well, what's anything special about the class? Well, it, I am wearing pants. Well, not pants, but shorts, I think. Okay, and I think that's good, but uh, we're probably – Maybe you have to skip a couple of seconds because I was setting things up. I was uh, I had a different programming than the regular class. I was doing main site for this little exercise. Okay, well let's jump on in. Uh, main site. <laughs> You're gonna do arc weight to compensate for the lack of height in your okay. box. Were you just telling someone they were gonna use more weight for the lack to? to compensate for the lack of height in their box? We don't, we didn't have enough boxes for everyone in the class that I was prepared for the amount of people that I had there. So we were, uh, one of my options there was, okay, let's, you can, she was gonna do RX with the box, mm -hmm. but she was like, oh, if I'm using a smaller box, can I go lighter? And I was like, if you are, you are, we're gonna do RX, or maybe you can just use the same weight RX than the- Oh, got it. Got yeah. it. So you were you were confirming that she was going to use the same load, but just have a smaller box because you ran out of gear. Yeah, yeah. If you see normally under the Arizona flag, we had more boxes, but they were all used that day. I ended up with more people than I was expecting in the class. You're a popular man, Mario. I hope so. Oh no, no worries. <laughs> I happen. hope so. <laughs> all right, let's skip. My wife were for the regular class is pretty pretty too, so. I appreciate your guns are showing. I have an extra one for today. Our workout is gonna be a three minute, uh, sorry, three rounds of one of shuttle runs, dumbbell snatches, bike for calories, or any other of the machines that we have, uh, dumbbell box step ups, strict burpees, and rest. Every station is gonna be one minute. So I will have one minute to do as many shuttle runs as I can. Then I'm gonna have uh, one minute for dumbbell snatches, by, uh, calories in the bike, box step ups, streak burpees, and one minute of rest. That minute of rest is built in into the uh, workout, so you should not skip it, okay? There's no extra credit. Questions about our workout? No? The upper limits for uh, females are gonna be 35 and 20 inches. Everything under that is appropriate. For the gentlemen, it's gonna be 50 pounds, our uh, upper limit, and 24 inches, our upper limit. Everything under that, again, is acceptable. Our goals for today are pretty specific to each station. So we're gonna have 10 plus in the shuttle run, 15 uh, dumbbell snatches, 15 plus dumbbell snatches in a minute. Seven to ten, uh, seven calories for the ladies, ten calories for I like the guys. This very specific bike, directions you're giving here. Seven plus burpees, 
and we want some consistency in each round. It would be weird to have like 80 something reps in the first one and like 22 reps on nice. the second one. Good so we general want to keep something to that keep is that consistent, consistent throughout the, the three rounds. We want to. Keep so some of the things you can say to help support that would be like, we want general consistency and people are, will need explicitly played out for them. Sometimes it'd be like, we're gonna need some general consistency. How you do that is by not going as hard as you can in the first round, you know, <laughs> like, cause some people will still blow out in that first round. It's like, Hey, pull back just a little, maybe give them some guidelines about, okay, I want you to finish 10 seconds before the transition. So that way you can make a good smooth transition to the next one. So if you wanted to make it a little bit more detailed there, you could add a little bit extra to, to, but the, I love this setup. I love how specific you're being with stuff. Keep also our pace throughout all of them, but try to push it a little bit. Try to make it a challenging but sustainable pace. It Love shouldn't it. be something that you just go cruising in the bike for one minute and you are not Love getting it. a lot of calories. Try to push it a little bit to a pace that you can um, keep, but also play to your strengths. If I know that the bike will obliterate me, I will just do the very minimum work there and try to keep a pace that doesn't get my heart rate too high. But uh, if I know that I am really good at dumbbell snatches, maybe I'm gonna go a little bit faster just to keep up with those numbers. Nice. Okay, questions so, about- So, so this, is, this is interesting and it's a fun, fun topic. Here, let my dog out. She's whimpering for some reason. Um, <laughs> so the, I, I think you've made the conscious decision to ask people to go for a high score on this by playing to their strengths for the day. So it's like, it's like this is a fight gone bad style workout, right? You got minutes yes. worth of rat work and then you've got the rest afterwards. Um, the if you're going for a score it makes total sense to play to your strength you use the things that you suck at that are a little harder to get rep for rep and you just kind of like you move through those and get reps but then you really turn it on for the things you're good at and i totally agree with that when you're pursuing like a high score uh, another way you could approach the same day is be like okay there's going to be movements here that you're better at and movements here that you're worse at um, who here is bad at this, but you know, okay. Who here is bad at this? Who here feels like they're bad at this? And then you can be like, all right, the thing you raised your hand for, I want you to make that the focus for the day for you. I want you to go as hard as you can in that, because that's going to cause you to be better at that. We're going to pursue that weakness headlong. So by no means is what you did incorrect. I think it's appropriate 99% of the time, but occasionally if you want to switch up the mentality of instead of Instead of smashing what you're good at, hey, here's how you get the best time on this workout. It's fun to switch things up and be like, okay, what are you worst at? Let's pursue that a little bit harder than other things. And this can be done in any kind of a day, a work rest day like th or this, or it can be done in a day like Helen where it's three rounds for time. Be like, hey, I want you to run extra hard or pull ups extra hard. But I love the specific focus that you're giving them, what you're asking for the day, but make sure at times you switch that up too. Do you have this? No? Okay. Great job. So I'm going to ask you guys to be under behind this uh, cone Good here. Good short brief. I freaking love it. So you did like you, 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 you know, you talked to him about, yeah, now you want to come back in? What the heck, man? <laughs> um, you, you talked to him about what was necessary. You locked eyes with them. You gave, you know, here's some scales that could happen. Uh, you didn't over crush anything uh, and you gave him some very specific feedback and then you moved him right into the warm up. I love it. That's, that's way to not belabor the point. We're gonna start our warm up. That girl has uh, very shiny two, uh, <laughs> two runs, don't worry about it. So let's say two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. Let's do six people first and then five people behind. Did they know they were being filmed? I have my- uh, Yes, I asked them if they were okay with being filmed. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I, they just send, seem a little tense to some degree, no talking or anything like that, but it's all good. <laughs> so the first line, what are we gonna do? I know a couple of you like competition. We have Team Green here, apparently. And oh, <laughs> Team Green is also divided on, on that side. We're gonna squat three times, then go to this cone, touch the ground, and go back. The last person that gets back gets a burpee reward. So let's try to see who's gonna be, get their boot reward in the first round. Ready, we started three squats in three, two, one, go. Full squats, full range of motion. So run, something... run, 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 run
I love the engagement and the, the excitement with it. The only thing is these guys, I guess in Arizona, they're not technically cold because it's a million degrees, but they are cold in the sense that they haven't done any movement yet, right? There's been no prep for this. To, so to go from zero to a thousand this quickly can be potentially injurious for people. Um, the, this is and a silly thing like this too, where you also pair it, like I say silly in a good way. Like I like yeah. the, the, the silly nature of this. Um, can also make it so someone steps into something like this and this is where they tear a hammy, you know, like just being silly because they haven't warmed up or they haven't done something like that. So ideally we have a little bit of movement prep, like one or two rounds where they were just, all right, guys, we're going to cycle through a couple of times, do three squats and go three squats and go three squats and go. Okay. And then the next round you go, all right, we're going to make it a little bit of a race this time. Team green here is good at that, you know? So that way you have a few rounds of them just getting a bit more warm before they jump into sprinting for their very lives um, <laughs> and squatting fast. So ideally prep them just at least a few okay. times. And I know you have the freedom to not because you're in Arizona, um, but but do your best to, to build it yeah. up prep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna rule this a tie so we get one burpee. Second round or second, second group, let's get in front now. We're gonna do the same thing. Ready in three, two, one, go. Also, there's a lot of people who Damn are not run. going below parallel. Uh, and you didn't really have much of a chance to address that because you didn't teach the squat at all. Jury, and you didn't and watch a couple yeah. in slower motion. And that's what you would do with like a little bit of, everybody get yeah. out of the squat stance. Wow. Right, we're going to do a couple of squats. Instead of doing a Felicia, a little bit deeper. Jim, a little bit deeper. Whatever might be there. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna do three, and on the third one, we're gonna go again, run back and forth. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, go. Like same here. Like there's a bunch of people who are going half range. You have some competition up. for the place, place here. Um, are you seeing that? Uh, it's a little bit blurry on my end. So, okay. but yeah, it, it it could definitely be 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 the case. Yeah, I mean, we're like across the room in this video. And it is very clear that they are nowhere near range. <laughs> it's not like they're almost there and, ah, oh, we're being strict. It's like they are halfway down on the push-up or they are, you know, halfway down on the squat. Like, let's go back to that, even that first round of squats. Watch this. So, like, the guy who gets last, the guy in gray shorts. Yeah. You seen him? Watch, watch yeah. his squat right now. Yeah. He's not even close. And yeah, I, part of it is probably because he wasn't warm. Uh, and then the same thing that happens in the next round. Watch the girl in gray. Same with the girl in white's a little closer, but the girl in gray and with the blue pants, same sort of yeah. deal. Like they're they're not close. And it's partly, like I said, because they're not warm. Uh, but the lack of front end reps, like in this type of a thing, because they're racing, you can't really address that. So they're getting away with some, some shistier reps. Same yeah. thing with over here in the push-ups. Um, you show them the correct movement, but maybe having them do one and making sure that they can hit that range. And if it's too hard, be like, cause clearly some of these people are going to struggle on pushups. Like the girl in white there is not, not even close. Just be like, Hey, drop to your knees. If uh, it, it's better to get range than it is to do the, the, the plank movement. And that should kind of be the standard for everything that we do is it's range is always more important than the difficulty of the yeah. movement that we're doing. Uh, whether it's push-ups or squats or the speed on them or the loading, it's like we want range over uh, the other stuff. Like the girl in white there, yeah, with the uh, yeah. same sort of deal. She's She wasn't even close um, with the electric paints. Good. Is there I'm a reason good. other than just they were warming up that you didn't make them go all the way down? Yeah, it was for me, it was more like starting to get them moving. In my head, that's how my general warm-up was designed to just like have to get them starting to move then more than actually being meticulous about like uh movement patterns that should happen but yeah okay fun it's gonna be well, i'm gonna challenge you to be more be facing range of the motion whiteboard <laughs> so we're gonna do five jumping jacks turn around run and then, and then get back ready in three because i think there's two, there's types one, of movements go. Like there's types of movements that it's that you can be more generous, like a jumping jack, 
is a good example. Like it yeah. doesn't really matter where their feet go, you know, and it's a good warm up movement or even like a mountain climber, you know, mountain climbers where you're kind yeah. of going back and forth and where your foot goes or a kickback or something like that. But, but I think with movements that are standard to a lot of the workouts that we do squats, push ups, um, very specifically, like those are things that more often than not people short the range of motion on ring dips, um, handstand pushups. So the thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that anytime they're doing them, we're reinforcing a better pattern, like any time, okay. um, if possible. So I think there are places you can kind of fudge it a little, but there's, there's also places you want to dig in a bit. Clarissa says she's excited to see coach Mario on the show. Woo! Me too. That's your wife. Yes. Dang. <laughs> I, I think she's uh, invested in this in a deeper way. I'm uh, also yeah. excited to see you coach coach Mario on the show, Clarissa. The far he's killing it. Okay. Greg Grace Schwartz is going for his burpees. The amazing race back there. Second group. Be ready. Remember, we're going. But he also likely has a higher capacity, and he's intentionally going slower in order to warm himself up a bit more. Um, and if you built that in for him, he might be able to push a little harder here and make have a little bit more fun in the game. So it's good that he has the mindset to pull himself back because he's the type of guy who probably knows that he's going to start tight, and then <laughs> and if he were to like go hard in the paint right now, he'd go to Snap City. Um, so whatever culture you've built around making those modifications for yourself, I, I like that that exists. I'm gonna face the whiteboard in three, two, one, go. Are you gonna try to make her we smile? It. They love mine too. Go, 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 go. Is that your wife on another account? Uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Good. Good job, guys. Matt, are you asking so, if now Mario and I are, are related? Like, I mean, I know we have, like, both winning complexions, but I, I we are uh, very much not so related. Move back to this <laughs> side. We're going to do some articular rotation to get a little bit more range of motion for our work today. We're going to start with our wrists. We're going to put them in a fist. We're going to exaggerate the movement as much as possible. We're going to do seven to one side, seven to the other. Yeah, so all in all, that beginning section, uh, all in all, that beginning section, I actually really like uh, the engagement that you made those people have. I just think that's inappropriately placed. I think it could shift to a different place within the general warm up. It could go to a little bit later, or it could, like, you know, there's there's a couple different places it could be that would maybe make it so people could be more engaged to that because i love the fact that you made a little competition i love the fact that you kept it lighthearted. i love the fact that you pushed them and made them go there like that's that's wonderful but i think it could it could go just after a generalized warm-up um okay. uh, just yeah, maybe before the articular rotation that i'm doing with them right now yeah uh oh i did a full on, on the third one we're gonna move. good we're gonna do Middle, middle side circle, seven to the front, seven to the back. Nice, and you can always fill the time. Guys. So, from there, we are going to uh, do the same thing, but now down. We're gonna do seven forward, seven back, keeping our shoulders back all the time. So your eyes should be scanning the group, see if anyone's Try to not make them a circle where and you want them. As possible. And if they are where you want them, that's great. <laughs> you could even compliment that. Good. From there. The and if you need to fill these spaces, like these times where like you're not seeing anything go wrong, like those are your little opportunities to jump in and out with the people and be like, dude, I'm loving the pink shoes, Clarice. I'm, I'm, thank you for wearing your reflective pants, uh, Shana. Uh. Like the all all the different ones you can throw out there. Like these are your times where you can kind of jump in and and pepper them with little touches that are not coaching based touches. Um, if they're doing a movement that's that simple. <laughs> that that you, you squeeze winning everything else. Hours. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just for educational purposes. We're gonna do uh, five circles, seven circles forward, seven circles backwards on each side. 
Try not to touch the ground once your nice. your foot is off. Good specific instruction. No, it's just a little bit of balance. Yes. I always have one crunchy side and one uncrunchy side, so it's kind of weird. I would like some consistency so I can say I am good looking and crunchy at the same time. Crunchy all over. Yes. It's crunch free. Crunch free, that's 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 good. Do you know what the term crunchy means good. in like social media? The, the term what? Crunchy. No. Crunchy is like the hippie parent who's like all into like natural oils and like kids walk around barefoot and they, you know, like the ah fight the system, homeschool. Like that's a crunchy parent. And then oh. on the other side of things, people who are like really kind of conform to the other side, it's silky. Um, so like it unrelated completely, but, uh, <laughs> so like there'll be crunchy moms and crunchy dads and silky moms and silky dads. So it was funny that you kind of kept repeating it. Yeah. And it's there, interesting because imagine this is you have class. one of those two. This is a mom's class? That yes. gets like that, like yes. slimy cover in it. If you lit it too much time on the air or like custard. So you want to keep like steering it. You're going to put your knee above your hip line. We're gonna do ten circles. Oh, custard or Big in Mexico it's easier move. because we have atole, yeah, creme brulee. Creme brulee, yes. In Mexico we have something called atole, and if you leave, leave your atole like it's warm and you let it cool, it gets like a like a thin like membrane. I have like, never yes, ever it. done that move. Yeah, it's weird. So I learned it from Ray Reckner. It's example, great. I highly like, recommend it. Just steer it as much cool. as you can. Se seven to one side, seven to the other. Then switch your leg, and again. <laughs> Matt, Relax Matt are you asking if I'm crunchy? Yeah. I am slightly crunchy. I, I you can know that, that is also a dish. Uh, slunky. When I getting got, it's amazing. I love it. I like to be in the middle. Yes, it's uh, my kids don't flour, tortilla, cheese. I think you're pretty cool, Dad. Uh, pastor meat. Thanks, Maria. Another, uh, some more cheese and another cor uh, flour tortilla. You're describing you like a oof. meal. It's great. We should all go try to find it. <laughs> <laughs> From there, just to finish. We're going to go inside and outside with our I love when you it's do something to bring people into your world. Uh, I think it can go over the top where all you do is talk about yourself the whole time. But in a class that's particularly stiff, you try to engage and you try to like tell stories and do that. And you did a really good job of it there. And anytime you bring people into your own world, you connect them to you, you try to connect to them. Like that just builds environment. And I think that that makes coaching easier in general. Like it's uh, our, the more our people in and out, feel they can trust seven you. Seven to and, one side are loving what you're doing the easier things become yeah and uh, behind this Good job, uh, cone here yeah we're going to start our warm-up uh we can do two oh, i think we went uh, backwards runs. don't worry about it so let's say two four six. what was that i think we went back in the video again six eight oh ten, yeah i think 11. it's going to start oh, that. Do one of those two a lower I object. was like, wow, we can go into a little a bit place. and stand. You have selected for the workout. That is also uh, Pastor Me. There it is. How did that happen? I don't know. All that one. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's Ruth. Ah, uh, he used to teach that here. Nice. <laughs> Good. So, we're going to have some dumbbell snatches today. Dumbbell snatch looks like this. On the other side. I'm excited to see your progression okay, so to the dumbbell. Break it down a little bit <laughs> to uh, pieces so that we can build over it. We're going to start with our dumbbell in the ground between our feet. I want your hips, uh, your heels, to be just under your hips or slightly outside, what is more, whatever is more comfortable to you. From there, we're going to start with a deadlift. We're going to push our hips back and down. Knees are going to be slightly out, and because this is a lower object, we can squat a little bit and stand with it. Okay? We're going to do five on each side. Switching, you can switch on the ground or you can switch on the top. Whatever is more comfortable. Five reps on each side. Go. Nice. Deadlift. Two, three, four. Position off the ground. You're looking for foot position. Look forward. Look Try to keep your back as flat as you can. Position. Good job, Kimi. Yeah, they're all moving pretty well. Good um, job, guys. So. The next one, it's gonna be 
I haven't heard much individual interaction with regards to their movement yet, and it's still early on. But the like I said before, the more individual touches that you can make happen, the better. You've been pretty general, and everything you've been saying is correct. And there hasn't been much opportunity for it, and they're all moving well. So obviously, stuff like you've done previously helps here. But I, I'm looking forward to seeing you make more individual touches. I know it'll happen. Hips getting involved right, in the movement. I hope so. <laughs> so I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna go up and pop my hips up. I'm gonna keep my arm as relaxed as I can. It's gonna go up. I don't wanna push it forward. I wanna go up, switch hands. We're gonna do five on each side too. Ready? Go. Keep your back same as flat as we were doing the last time. Don't watch your toes, Levi. Jump a little bit. There you go. Better. Wait a second. Good job, good. Keep your elbows and your arms relaxed as much as possible. Allison, put your hips a little bit lower. Good. Good. Nice. Good job. Good job, Mario. <laughs> That's what I was hoping Same for. Thing, Try to get yourself a little bit lower. Not so I much. I also here. like how you're checking Try back in, making put sure your that hips a little bit lower. Good. They do what you ask them to Good. do. Now for the next one, we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna add a high pull. Try to get as close to our shoulder as we can. It's gonna go from here, up and down. Again, it's more of a hip movement pushing up our dumbbell than actually us pulling it up. There's a difference from doing this than using my hips to punch it up. Okay, let's do five on each side. Ready, go. So it's not bad to have them just be keep moving and like do five on this side, do five on this side and kind of try like scan the group. Uh, if you want a little bit more control over whether or not you can look at individual people or a broad swath of people, having them go on your cue works better for that. So, hey, everybody get to the bottom. When I say go, give me a deadlift shrug, high pull. Ready and go, ready and go. And then you can adjust finishes, the setup position. That patterning works really well for teaching complexity and progressions. What you're doing is working here. But if you get newer people, I highly recommend doing that other version where you click into like, hey, on my command, you do this. On my command, you do this. And once you get to the full movement, then you can be like, all right, now do five of the full movement on your own sort of deal. Or you do a five on your command and they, okay, now do... 10 and 10, you know, 10 on five on the right arm, five on the left arm, something like that. Um, but if you're having trouble picking individuals and doing that kind of stuff, having them go on your queue works really well for it. Yep. Thank you. Tough, Jeff. Good, Anna. Keep it close to your, to your, uh, to your body. Good. Back Not so much arm. Yeah. Jump a little bit more. Good. Yes. Good, Good job, Kimi. Good job, Ruth. Good, Levi. Nice. Hey, jump in. Good job, Mario. Good job. Good. Now, once we did all the effort to get the dumbbell here, we're going to punch up the ceiling. So keep everything as close as you can, as you've been doing it right now. Finish punching up. Close your ear. If you go out, it's going to be a little bit heavier because there's nothing holding it under. You want to keep it just over your body. Looks like this. Bang! Jump as much as you can. Pelvic thrust of a dolphin help right you, there. <laughs> help your arms do a less of an effort and just catch and lock. Okay? We're going to do five alternating. You can switch hands on the floor or you can switch hands on the way down. Okay? Whatever is more comfortable. Ten reps total, five on each side. Go. Good job, Linda. Brace your core so it doesn't pulls you back and press up. Good. Nice. Allison, put your hips a little bit lower again. Nice. Way to go revisit back to that point that you were looking for. How's your shoulder? Fine. Good check in. Good. You might have been able to do that sooner, but that's Let fine. me know if at any point we can switch it to something different. Good. So that is our dumbbell snatch. I like it, man. Uh, if you feel like you can get a little bit heavier than this for the workout, this would be a good time to switch that, uh, that weight. Remember that the upper limit for the ladies is 35, the upper limit for the guys is gonna be 50. So whatever feels comfortable for you to do three rounds for of one minute, 
there's a good chance. If you think that the one that you have right now it's appropriate, you can keep it. If you feel it's too heavy, you can also go down. If you are uh, taking a heavier load yeah, on you your uh, dumbbell, do four more reps total, alternating the arms, just to check that the weight that you have is the one that you wanna actually work out with. Nice. That would also be a good time to be like, remember, we're looking to get about this many reps. Okay. Come workout time, something like that. But very good specific things like, hey, look for this. This is this is about what I'm looking to feel like. So that was good. I like that. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, you didn't see anyone there that looked like they needed to go lighter, did you? I, uh, no. No, I don't think so. Yeah. If, if you did, the that what you said, like if you need to go lighter, feel free to as well. That's more appropriate if you saw somebody who maybe needed to go lighter, but mm, everyone there was at the right weight or, or they needed to go heavier. <laughs> one, one, so, of the, one of the things that I, I think I remember from, from that connection is there's a couple of older uh, athletes, not masters not. athletes. So sometimes they're hesitant on like, should I use this weight? Should I use more? Should I use less? And yeah. I was trying to give also the option of someone being like, oh, I warm up with this, and but I actually think it's too heavy or personally, I feel that this blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Give them also like a space of safety of being like, okay, I'm going to go lighter. Okay. Because maybe I was moving, they were moving good, but they felt that it was too much for the, in, the intended stimulus of three rounds. Got it. Okay. It. Okay. So you're kind of giving them a bit of an out if they needed to switch things up. Okay, cool. Just make sure you have, if you know who those people are, you just touch in with them and you go and you check to see that they haven't gone and picked a two pounder or something like that. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like I also have to hold you accountable to what you're capable of, not yeah. just what you want to do. <laughs> Fair enough. This is also the way got a giant phone in her pocket. There. Yes. <laughs> and we're going actually to that. Are we using one dumbbell for that? One dumbbell. I picked up that 50. Then as, as they're pulling them out, they're looking around the group, trying to see if anyone's grabbed the wrong load. Yeah, I tried to get to be like close to where if the you dumbbell switch your and you have yeah. so I was able to see more or less how everybody a was. A lighter load, yeah. do four was. reps just to check how it feels. It should be something that you can continuously move and you're able to keep the same movement mechanics yeah. that you had. Revisiting back to the thing you just said, just loader making sure everyone heard dumbbell. it. Good. Yeah, that's how relaxed I need your arms to be all the time. Yes. Good job, guys. So Good. now we go to the next part of our workout that is going to be our step ups. So let's go to our box. Uh, I'm gonna use yours for a demo. The first thing we're uh, Matt asked if I prefer to tell an athlete what weight they should do. Uh, I like to build confidence around what they can do and choosing stuff uh, if, if possible, but there are definitely times where it's necessary to tell people what weight they should do. Um, and I think you can do like a hybrid between that. Be like, hey, most of us in here should be close to the RX weight. Uh, if for some reason you need to pull back, feel free to do so. That means you, Jim, you know, like if you want to do a, like a hybrid where you're saying, you know, like everybody should be here, but I want you to pull back to here. Uh, he did a good job in this specific class of giving rep ranges and stuff. But yeah, if you can tell an athlete what weight to do and you have that, that skill and you know the athletes well enough, Absolutely. I'm a big fan of being like, you need to do this load. You need to do this load. You need to do this load. It sometimes gets hard when you have so many members and you don't have exact ranges for them. But yeah. Um, one thing though, flow wise, are they going to get boxes right now? Is that what we're going to do? Doing? Is with nothing in our just going to go up, oh, look at full extension ahead of time. and down with both my legs up and down. That's one, uh, that's one on each side, alternating four reps total on each side. Nice. This is another time where you can you can hammer in uh, range of motion standards. Same with the snatch too. Uh, nobody was doing improper standards, but it's one of those things where you can always be like, make sure we always lock out up overhead. 
Uh, make sure we always touch the ground. Same thing on this. You can say, hey, make sure we stand all the way up on the top of the box. Make sure we go all the way down. Just be scanning for those standards issues in these warm ups. So that way, you're not having to. Yeah. Call me with the gloves over there is close. Good. Now that we have that, we're gonna go through the options that we have for our box step ups. The first of them could be a suitcase option. If you feel like this is more comfortable to you, we can go up, switch side just for educational purposes. <laughs> for educational up, purposes. And down. Let's do one and one just to check if that feels comfortable to you guys. It doesn't. With both hey, legs, hey. we're doing. Then they would go no, into. No, that's gonna feel good. Once. No, no, that's gonna feel good. Once. No, with both legs, we're doing one on each side. And down, both, both uh, legs. And the last one, it's my personal favorite, the one I'd use during this workout. I'm gonna go up. Get it back here on my shoulders, not on my neck, on my shoulders. I'm gonna go up and down, and I'm gonna do a dip to get it back in front. Let's do two reps there. Yeah, so that that whole flow could have probably been done a little bit, um, either all as one thing. Like very rarely do I have suggest people do all as one thing, but it's all it's pretty straightforward. Uh, like you either hold it this side, this side, here, here, or here. It doesn't need a huge demo for each one necessarily. Um, one thing you could potentially do is like do all of the demos in one go. All right, everybody try to hold like this is what it's holding the side. This is holding it right here. This is holding it behind the neck and this is holding it and blah, blah, blah. We're going to do two reps of each one of those. Go ahead and give me two reps. If you want. It's kind of the reverse of what I was saying earlier of like instead of making them go on your command on each one, you can kind of set it front load it a bit and say, okay, give me two reps of each. Uh, the other way is to just verbally take them through it. Like everybody hold the weight on one, your right arm. Give me two step ups, switch it to your left arm. Give me two step ups. All right. Now pop it up to your shoulder. Give me two step ups, pop it to the other shoulder. Give me two step ups. All right. And this next one, goblet hold, pop two step ups, blah, blah, blah. blah and now put it behind your head, two step ups. Now you get to choose which of those you like the best because the, the break in and out, like there's nothing particularly complex here. Um, with what they're watching, someone might be a little confused, but a different way to flow through what you just did would be to just, just a bit quicker. So that way there's not as much start and stop. But I also yeah. think that maybe due to the fact that it's so freaking hot where you live that like giving them some time to rest in between each one is kind of warranted sometimes, um, depending on uh, the, the temperature in the gym at the time. Uh, but that, that what you just did is probably the extent that you would want to go. Sometimes it can go run too long and it makes the class feel really yeah. start stoppy rather than flowy. Yeah. I will say though, one thing that, that kind of does help with what the way you did it is like, um, if you are continuously running through it and try two of each, then someone who's a bit slower might get really far behind and to where they would never do a few of those uh, types of step ups. So you could end up waiting in the end for them to finish everything. And because of the way you did it, it, it just kind of happened relatively quickly, but you would just have to wait for less people. So it, it's also good the way you did it. Those are, those are our options for today regarding our uh, box, box step ups. You can choose whichever you feel more comfortable with. What about the one where you rest it on your, put your knee up, you rest it on you your can, knee. You can mix and match. And maybe that. you start some way and then you decide that it's better to do the other. Maybe, you maybe tired not. of doing one thing. You can switch sides, you can move it around. The thing is that you have to be consistent throughout the minute. I would not recommend like switching around during the minute because you would look lose a lot of time and you want to use that minute, minute as much as possible. Nice. Good. Now, nobody likes to do burpees. But today we have to go through them because it's strict burpees. Regular burpee would be like this. But today we have strict burpees. So I'm gonna ask first everybody to uh, go to a plank position. And we are going, trying to avoid moving your, your hips. We're gonna do 10. A burpee progression, I like it. Shoulder taps. If you need to get a mat, 
also this is a good time to do it. Good, from there, we're gonna stay here. Keep your uh, toes shoulder width. If you get them closer, it's gonna be harder. So from here, we're gonna go down. So I like up, how your class feels like teaching the whole time. There's a lot of teaching that's going on where you're like, you're teaching each little piece, but you're not belaboring the point. You're basically just showing it to them and then saying, hey, do this. Showing it to them, then hey, do this. I like, I'm a really big fan of that method of flip-flopping back and forth with that. So it, it feels like there's a flow to your class and they're learning as they go, you know, and they can kind of listen if they know what, if they already know the movements, you're not, you know, breaking it all down super deeply. You're just saying, do this, then do this, then do this. Uh, and if they don't know the movements, they feel really well taken care of. So I think this is a good overall flow to have for classes. And then you, when you get the chance, you step out and make the personal touches happen. So good job. To do some variation. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but. If I don't okay, shrink your hands, I'm a teacher, keep them straight. So you, maybe yeah. Come somewhere. yeah. Yeah. So you know how to teach and keep engagement and, and have those interactions go. Uh, I think the only then difference is from that in teaching is then stepping in and making changes happen. Like, that's not going right. Do that. <laughs> See how it might be yeah. a good ointment, but let's try, uh, try to do them stepping up and down instead of jumping down. Let's it's do not the jumping down. No? It's the lowering. Oh, okay. We could do up downs. So, Aaron has a shoulder injury. He was telling me mm -hmm. that it bothers him, like doing the push down. So, I switch it to an up down. Yeah, just without the push up. Yeah. Um, you did lose this time in front of the whole class. Uh, so, everyone's kind of standing around watching, right? As you went through that. Um, so two ways you can mitigate that is either in the front end of class, if you know, he's got stuff going on, just be like, Hey, uh, what, what of this workout's going to hurt you? And he says the push portion of the push up, and you could address it there be like, great, we won't do that. We'll just do a kick out and hold right there. Um, so before class, if you know that he's got the issue, um, or once you get here and he's like, it hurts when I push down and you, if you don't have something right off the top of your head, like, Hey, go to push down, uh, you know, up down. And you've done that before you know what it is. Just be like, okay, well, when we get to the, as soon as we break out and go to start the workout, I'll, I'll show you what an up down is and we'll go there. So that way the rest of the class doesn't have to listen to you go through that whole thing. Um, because it, it really easily can, can get away from you to where there's yeah. like, all of a sudden they're sitting there staring at you and he feels put on the spot and they're like, I'm not getting much from this. And so I'm sure they don't feel that way, but it, it did take up a little chunk of your time there. Yeah. Um, so there's ways you can slide in and out of that without losing the rest of the class or making him feel put on the spot. Oh. I'm going to move you a little bit to here. Oh, great. <laughs> and this one too. <clears throat> yes, six people sign up for being in my class. Um, nice that's what the uh, yes, where do you also, yeah, yeah, let's, can you keep them back yeah. there? Yeah. So that so six people signed up and 11 people showed up? Yeah. Love it. It's such a better way to do it than have, you know, 11 people show up or 11 people sign up and six show up. It means you're doing something. People want to just be with Mario, bro. <laughs> I hope that's a reason. <laughs> that's my thought. What is that downtime? Uh... Good. It's the two minutes before so, they, uh, it was the time I gave them to rearrange their stuff. Two minutes. And get to the Let's, um... Got it. Um, you don't need to give them the full two minutes. You can just say two minutes. And if everyone's standing there staring, <laughs> you can be like, yeah. well, looks like we're all ready. And then move on into it. But maybe there was yeah. some people off camera that I didn't see who were still doing stuff. Uh, I was going to say, in my ideal to... world, there was everybody was going to be able to be seen on camera, but I end up having to do a square. Oh, okay. So that we're losing like, a third of the two thirds of the class it's on good. the on, on on that part yeah so people were still moving is what you're saying when the beep sounds i'm going to let you know five seconds before when the beep gets you walk to your station and start doing dumbbell snatches keep them close to your box 
because we're gonna do the box step ups just a little bit after. So just snatches up and down. Then we're gonna have our bike. That's why also we're close to our uh, equipment so that we can just jump into our bike. Then we have our uh, box step ups. Remember, you can use whichever positioning of three rounds. Okay, Intersection in Tokyo. This? No? What? Three rounds. Yeah, only three. So let's. There you go. What are they doing over here? Well, oh, they're lining up to start the workout. The first uh, minute of the workout is uh, shuttle runs. Oh, no. Okay, so one of the things that uh, you might want to do is one, have them run some shuttle runs before the workout. <laughs> just so they know what it is and have some tips for it another thing you could do is uh have them move from station to station uh just one time through all right everybody go to the first station cool do one shuttle run all right move to your next station all right do one shuttle one dumbbell snatch move to your next station do one box jump move to your next station do one row move back to your next station hey it's a rest station congratulations you know um just that way they know the flow through the class uh, another thing you might want to do for a day like this, I know you got kind of stuck last minute because the, so many people showed up, but that's, that's probably extra a reason to do it is like, say you had the class set up for six people to go through. Um, just say, okay, we're going to do this in two groups. Group one is starting on the rower. Group two is starting on the shuttle run. And then they just follow each other and they all rest at the same time, but they start on different things. And nobody should care. Nobody should be like, well, I wanted to start. It's just like, shut up. Like, just go on the, the like, uh, and if someone really cares, then be like, cool, start on the other one. Someone from that group can start on here. But that makes it so that everyone can kind of, they're not crunched. You're not running out of gear. They're not doing shuttle runs with this many people, you know? Uh, and anytime you have these kind of on the minute workouts that are like that, it's a really easy way to get to use less gear and have the same overall flow from the class. Um, did you, have you done that before? Yes. Uh, especially I think with in Mexico that the gym is a little bit smaller. Uh, sometimes classes packed a lot more or feel more packed. So we staggered like the, with fight combat, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know a lot of people do the one where they like feed people in. So like on the minute, they'll like feed them in from the back. So people will start resting and they'll move in. I'm just a big fan of being like, just choose your starting station and you're going to start there and follow the one. But when you do that kind of a thing, it's extra important that on the board really big, you kind of have the flow of what goes to what. And you make sure that you do it one time through, hey, one rep of each one to make sure we understand our flow. All right, everybody, now we're pumped, ready to go. Three, two, one, blah. And like I personally default, even in smaller classes, to having multiple stations just because I think it's an easier gear flow. Um, like, and, and it just it just organizes things in a, an easy way like that. But up to you how you want to run that. But I, I, would, I would recommend it here. Good, thank you. You get half the people going this way. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, like the, what's the name of this intersection in Tokyo? The one that has like, what is the people thing, crossing on from all the sides? Really from all the sides is, oh, that sounds. Yeah. This is gonna be, this is gonna be now. They're not as world Let's hope that this is working and the clock doesn't hate me today when we're. I recording. haven't been to Japan yet. <laughs> maybe, maybe ten maybe seconds. I have not either. Keep the same count for all the movements. We should go. Like family three, trips. two, one. Use and eyes. Go. Was the shuttle run supposed to be really slow? <laughs> no. Oh, I think part of it is it's really crowded. But that's, that's kind of what I was saying. If there's a way that you could spread Read through that through this, push your hips crowded, forward. I think people would feel a little bit more freedom to turn it on a bit. And then, yeah. like, there's clearly people in this class who could run a little bit quicker. And I know it's just the first round of a three round thing. But you should be looking and being like, that's pretty good for our legends geriatric class you know like let's pick it up a bit you know like private so lane pick out individuals nice. and be like tony faster you know like get because they're they're keep the same count keep the same count there is definitely people just kind of like sandbagging in a smidge here um and i know you can trust them in their overall feel but i think you also have the opportunity to know them a bit like this this young kid in black i mean he's kind of jaunting it but this this guy no 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 make him run faster 
Okay. Keep yeah. the same after count. In the very first warm up thing they did in that. What do you mean keep the same count? So if you did 16, 17, 18, yes. And now get in here. Try to jump with your weight. Don't limit it everything to lower back. Good, Levi. So again, you should be revisiting Joe that coach. stuff. Good. You're on green. 30 more seconds. Good job, Linda. Keep your chest up, uh, Mindy. Don't let it go down. I need to be able to see the school all the time. Even when I'm... Low, yes. Oh. I'm sure whatever you're giving her is magical Good. and she's like totally improving. She's not on camera. 10 more seconds and we're getting to our bike. So this girl who's right in front of you here, hey, she's... The, Good job, Allison, right. with those hips. Three, two, one. She's what, sir? Bye. She's just leaving her hips really high and rounding mm. her back as she picks it up. It's not not terrible, but it's definitely something you'd want to address. Just, and it sounded like you were, oh, son of a gun. It sounded like you were addressing that with the other girl, um, that same sort of deal. But it's a really common thing. When everyone, anyone's pulling something off the ground that's light, they tend to want to leave their hips really high because it's more effort to drop your hips lower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, But it's a better position. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Push oh, hard man. with your leg, Jeff. Poor, poor people doing these without work, uh, music. Did I what? Without music. Ten more seconds. There was music. Oh, was there? Yes. In the next round, get, to get yourself. We, we did our best so to find a level that was. Everybody was listening to it. Burpees. But the microphone didn't. Remember, like, strict burpees. You need that, that push up there. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do in the future is just say, tell people, come workout time, feel free to pump the music. Like, that's okay. I can get a general sense of what's going on uh, because I think it's freaking miserable to work out without music. It is my least favorite thing in the world, uh, but maybe I should do it more. I, ha I remember Ricardo telling us that if you have music, uh, you cannot hear the pain, so you need to, to work out without music sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with that. I feel, Ricardo, that's a fantastic way of saying it. Yeah, especially for running. People are like headphones on. He's like, no, no, no. Just run. Just run. Ouch. Um, so what does a strict burpee mean to you here? It's uh, keeping the, the push-up portion of it instead of just like dropping to the ground. Uh -huh. It's... A, you you go to a plank position, you push down, do the push up, stand and jump. Okay. So you could still do like a knee push up. Um yes. Okay. You just want to the the, the push up to be a, a stricter Yeah, the the portion of uh lowering yourself to the ground that should be more of a a push up um format than yeah. just like dropping that to the ground. Right, you, you're asking for a strict descent. Cool, got it. Yes. Uh, yes, there actually, uh, there's a couple of people doing knee push-ups for good. this in, in, in the video. Yeah, the girl in, in green is, which I like. Um, I just didn't know, because she's not, She it didn't, it didn't, it almost looks like a snaky down and up, but it, she's hitting her knees and then going in there. And I was just wondering what you're classifying for that. I like yeah. that. Um, Matt is saying, do I remember Miko? Of course I remember Miko. Miko is also the one who said, if you lie down after a workout, you've given up. He's like, animals don't lie down. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a crazy Finnish man who is unbelievably mentally tough. And yes, we can learn from him, but I am not as tough as him. <laughs> I, I ask, usually ask him not to sit down. Yeah, because or drop because one of my one of the doctors that worked out at uh, Raramuri in Mexico City, Raramuri, Mexico City, he told me like it's not great for your heart. So I usually ask like him, yeah. yeah, like the end of the of the workout or something like walk around or walk hundred meters and just breathe and try to get your heart rate down instead of just like dropping to the ground. Oh, for sure. I mean, in terms of there's all kinds of benefits of learning how to stay standing. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also yeah. the reality of it. it hurts real bad. And sometimes it's good to just be like, I am so done. Uh, and if you don't have to do that at times, then maybe you're not ever going hard enough. Yeah. But that's just my personal opinion on it. 
I was gonna say I drop down after the open workouts. <laughs> yeah, when it really counts. Yeah, when there's someone counting. Yeah, hey, I, I like that that round. It looked like they were running a little faster. Yeah, I think they're also a little bit more comfortable with the space now. Yeah, at least with some of them actually started from our uh, in the screen t from the left side instead of like the opposite side of the whiteboard. So probably that also help. Um, they ask if they could stand start from their side where their boxes are instead of uh, having to walk all the way around. Okay. What did you get her? I think she. I think you did. Yeah, you dropped her hips lower. Cool. She. You just had an interaction with her where you dropped her hips lower. Okay. Nice. Great job, Linda. Five seconds. Let's start getting ready for our bike. Let's go. Let's see that ski bike. Oh, yeah, I have to end up pulling out a skier and rowers and other stuff. You had what? I had to end up pulling out like the ski ergs and the rowers and. Yeah. Because of all the people. Um, yeah. But that's the thing is like, if you would have had them all start on different stations, you, yes. you could've, everybody could have rode sort of deal. Yeah. I think it was bike, but yeah, you're, you're right. Oh, everybody could have biked. Sorry. Yeah. No, but yeah, you, yeah, that's, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we get the gist of it. You did great. So all in all, what I really love is that your class flowed from start to finish. There was just like, you had a very clear progression. It looked like you had a plan. You followed that plan pretty well to a T. The plan was super inclusive of everybody. So you were kind of like able to get everybody moving through. You had progressions for everything. You had progression for a freaking burpee. That's great. You even had progression for step ups. It's like, we're going to step up one time, a couple times, just so that way you get the feeling. And then you do each one of those pieces. There's some things that you could elongate a little bit. And there's some things you could pull back a little bit, like something that's more complex like the 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 snatch version of it you could do a little bit more specific queuing of like hey go on my commands so i can watch very specific things uh, and then something that's a little bit basic you could do the opposite of that where it's like here just do a bunch of these reps and we're gonna go through with the step ups like we were talking about other than that man i, I think you did a great job you did a good job of jumping in and coaching once you started moving there um, the, the only other big thing was just let's, instead of having them sprint right as the start of the warm up. I know you're in Arizona, but have a little bit of a warm up before the warm up and hold them to on the bigger movements to high standards, no matter what. Uh, and then, and that way you don't have to revisit that down the road overall. Yeah. Great, man. Like that's the, I think that's the first time I've ever seen you coach. Uh, we've known each other for so long now. I, I, you were just starting that journey. Um, like when we were first talking, not just starting, but like all I saw you do was translate. I didn't see you coach. Um, yeah. So it's cool to see you killing it this far on and just putting your head down and kicking ass. And now you're a citizen here, right? Permanent, resident, re legal permanent resident. Legal yes, permanent almost residency. There. Almost, uh, there, almost there. Just two, two years and a half away from it. Dude, so stoked for you, man. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any I questions? Have, I have to say, that I have to do to give credit to where credit's due. I think the fact that I've been like working out like and learning from Ricardo Rivas from the staff too, that has a lot of like impacted a lot of the of, of my coaching. And even translating the seminars is gives me the opportunity to see people like you, like Teffy, uh, Matt Loading, Lisa Ray, all of you great like uh, experts and brilliant minds just being able to share that i think that has helped me a lot as a coach to to do better for my athletes and for the people that are put, putting their trust in me every day well it shows and one of the things like i mean it feels like you teed this up but like i think one of the best things we can do as coaches is model good coaching for other people and i think there's been a lack of that in this space of a place to go watch good coaches coach and you got such a good opportunity to watch that at level ones and translate and do that. I got the same opportunity when I first came up. I was a video editor, so I got to watch people who were good do their job all the time. And then I got to watch it again and again. So uh, fancy this, but we're coming out with a product that I'm spearheading called The Knowledge, which is going to have a whole ton of that. And uh, it's basically 
making basic stuff develop, you know, de- uh, delivered by really amazing coaches on like a back end coaching platform that you guys can check out. But it's coming soon. Uh, don't tell anyone about it. Okay. I mean, or tell everyone what it's up to you. <laughs> um, but cool, man. I, I'm stoked on it. Do you have any questions for me? Um, there's, um, there's, a, there's always like different things that I ask coaches that I, that I admire and that I trust about, uh, common places that I see some of my athletes that I have struggled to, um, to fix sometimes that I might have gotten a little bit better with them, uh, or like improve their movement, but it's not still like fully there. So okay. one of the things that I am uh, working with one of my athletes right now is he gets full dev in the squad. Knees are going out, back is straight, but the end of his um, heels caves in a little bit. Where's my hand? So instead of being flat to the ground, it like moves in a little bit towards mm-hmm. the inside and the ankle is caving in. Do you have any um, um, suggestions? So his, his knee is out, his but knees his are knee out. Is caved in. Yes. He has full depth. He has chest up, but his ankle keeps, and I've tried like, at first I thought it was the shoes and I was like, okay, maybe let's try it without the shoes and still the ankle, still both of the ankle cave in. That for me is something, yeah, it's it's something that I work it with him. And is it drastic? Is it like, it, does it like lift up or is it just like, is pressure maybe. going like, do you have a video of it? I don't have a video of it. I have a shoe, but in, like if this was flat, He's doing everything, but he's going out like this. When it's he's in, though. it's in. Yes, it's caving in, and the oh, outside it's out of- with a knee that's out. What's yep. the angle? What's the angle of his foot? Is it extreme uh, angle or is it straighter? It is. It's middle ground. It's not super out. We we I addressed that because I thought it was first. It was going too wide in his with his toes out. Yeah, but he's um, he's still getting uh. I, I switch the the toes direction in or out, widen and narrow his stance, and I still kind of see that. I don't know if that's how he's built, or it might, it might be an anatomical difference. I mean, like, is his arch caving? Like, does the arch flatten and go in, or does literally just the heel go? I don't even know how that would work. I kind of want to see this. Like, yeah, um, I, I will ask him if he lets me allows me to to video his. He's, he's squat and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you a video. Yeah. Cause it almost seems counterintuitive. Like you got a bunch of good questions here in the bottom, like ankle mobility or his arches caving, uh, the can, can color the chunkla. Oh, she's talking about the foot as oh, yeah. a model. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, uh, have you tried gripping the floor with his feet, setting the tripod, big toe? Yeah. Big toe uh pinky toe heel i'm sizing a more active foot um have you tried that one from dan i mean that that's the same one like the torque like from kelly where you're looking to create the arch by grabbing the ground with the big toe but i'm just i'm having a trouble visualizing how a knee could be driven out but then an ankle would collapse and it because they're so like linked yes yes and that's and that's one of the things that is has been keeping me like I've tried, I, this are good, like the, the type of thing, I might try that next, but I've played with how wide or how narrow his stand is, maybe like asking not to go so wide with his knees. I. You could also try try one from the top down. Like, so G's Louise is talking about applying torque, like Kelly says, um, but a lot of people try to do that in the bottom of the squat where they'll get down and then try to twist. But if you start the initiating movement by planting twisting and then squatting so you you get to that place yeah. and then and then go versus twisting as you go sometimes that helps for people but i don't know like that almost feels like the, um, it would cave it more i don't know i've tried the separate the ground but i'll try the twist from the try top. the twist try to corkscrew in and see if that does anything i want to see this video like send send it yeah. up put it up there uh, put it on your social send it to me or something like that I, i'd love to see it man yeah, the other the other one. Uh, well, this this, this is wonderful. Yes, 
this one uh this one fail i asked coach bergener about it at the games he was alone in the booth of like bergener's train i was like hey what do you recommend he had me squat and he fixed my overhead squat but i still had questions about uh about that or that that squat for for my client the sure. other one is um right now one of my clients when he lunges his move his feet are aligned to with his hips he's comfortable with that but when he does a uh, split jerk his toes in the front foot come in how dangerous is that it's not no it, it can happen okay yeah 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 are you talking about the toes turn the front foot twists the front foot twists out so the heel points out when he, yeah. he's front foot that's okay it should in okay. fact there should be a little bit of a twist in order to plant that foot like because you're outside your hips it's not a straight foot it's it's okay. more twisted you actually because you angle the back left foot too to angle there. So if you're splitting, front foot goes out and twists a little, back foot angles towards the other one. If you're okay. up falls the foot like a true lunge, that would be imbalanced because you'd be you'd be creating two kind of skis. You kind okay. of want to push out against that to to create a little bit. Of it. it you don't want it to be too extreme, but it's not it's not okay. dangerous. In fact, it's oftentimes really advantageous. Okay, good. Yeah. Those are two of the things that I've been uh, researching, reading a little bit about, looking into uh, other coaches to see what they have. So yeah. now that I have the chance to have you here casually, I'm like, I think this is a great place to ask. Well, I think a lot of people enjoyed that conversation. They were all offering some awesome cues down right here and tips and stuff. So I think digging into the nuance like that is super fun uh, occasionally. Uh, the, it's, it's good to just pick apart like little things like that and learn from the experience of others. Um, what's funny though, is like, you don't hear me talk about any stuff like that on these big reviews because those things are so much less important than the big, <laughs> they're like, they're like way less important than the rest of the stuff. Um, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful to unpack those at times. And so I really enjoy it. And I'm really excited to see this video where, where the feet go and what that all does. So yeah, send that over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Dude, it was awesome to have you. I think that's the end of the show. Let me know if you need anything. Can I shout out to the gyms that I've been part Hell of? Yeah. Shout it out, Mario. Well, evidently CrossFit fix right now where I am uh, coaching in Tucson. Come visit us at some point. Uh, in Chicago, Clark Street CrossFit is uh, reopening, and I am really happy. The owner is an amazing guy. They have a great uh, staffing uh, staff staff there. The coaches are great, and they are amazing. They they were my first home CrossFit home in the U.S. when I uh, started dating my wife. So I'm visiting during the summer. So I really appreciate them. And obviously, the best gym, the best CrossFit gym in Mexico City. Rarmur CrossFit run by Ricardo Rivas. I think that Yay! if you are in one of those three cities, you should come and you should go and see one of their, their gyms because they are amazing. Heck yeah. Well, thank you for the shouts out. Shoots. Thank you for being here, Perfect. Mario. Yeah. Thank you very much to you. It was great. Uh, this opportunity, I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you around. We'll do it again.